My guest tonight is an Academy Award-winning actor who has starred in such films as The Deer Hunter, Pulp Fiction, True Romance, just to name a very few. His latest movie, Wild Mountain Time, is available on demand. It's a beautiful film. Please welcome the great Christopher Walken. Sir, how are you? Thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. I want to say, I want to start off by saying, if there's one thing I notice in this business for my entire life, it's who's got the best hair. And I maintain that you have, in my opinion, maybe the best hair of anyone in the acting business. What's your still, secret? What do you do? I still have hair. And uh, I don't know. All, all my life, people have talked about my hair, and I don't know why. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, we're on Zoom, but if we weren't on Zoom, I would reach over and I would try to put my hand into your hair. That's how good it is. And it's you would probably, you would stop me, I'm sure, but uh, it's, it's thick, it's got life, and it's distinctive. It's just regular hair, and it doesn't seem like much to me. <laughs> You're wrong. You're totally wrong. My whole life is about hair. You've and, got um, interesting hair. I don't have that. I've got hair. What is your secret for, do you do anything to your hair? Is there any secrets you have? Do you use special oils, creams, balms? No, years ago, when I was a kid, uh, a friend of mine, Anthony Perkins, the actor, he said that if you grab your hair every morning for five minutes and tug on it, uh, chances are you won't uh, lose it because apparently keeping your hair has a lot to do with keeping the blood flowing in your scalp. So I've done that. So when you wake up in the morning, you grab your hair and you pull on it as hard as you can for five minutes. I watch the news and I pull on my hair. Yeah. <laughs> that would come naturally these days. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. You know, help me clear something up because I heard a rumor that you auditioned for the role of Han Solo. And if, is that true, first of all? Yes, but, you know, at that time, I think, you know, hundreds of actors auditioned for that part. I also auditioned for Love Story. You know, again, it must have been hundreds of people. You auditioned and, for the, the Ryan O'Neill part in Love Story. Yes, I auditioned for Superman, and, and so did everybody else. So I didn't get the part, and it's a good thing, because I wouldn't have been much good. Well, I, did, I beg to disagree. I'm now rethinking all of those roles with you in them. And I, I think you as Han Solo would have been fantastic. No slight on Harrison Ford. I think he did a fine job. But uh, I would have loved your... It would be a very different Han Solo. Very different. But too much maybe like Chewbacca. So, you know. <laughs> you would have just done a lot of... Ah, you think, maybe? Would have been too much. Too much. I was thinking about this today in preparation for our interview... You have had so many iconic roles, so many great performances, yet one of the things that probably uh, you might be best known for or among your best known pe performances would be in the Sound Out Live sketch, Cowbell. Have you found that to be true? Yes, it was a very good sketch and, and uh, but I, I don't understand why, why it follows me around like it does. And how does it follow you around? Give us oh, an example. Oh, you know, I, I, it doesn't, I was in a restaurant in Singapore and the couple at the next table, uh, at one point, the guy said to me, uh, Chris, you know, this salad needs more cowbell. <laughs> and I thought, I've, I've, I, it's gone too far. <laughs> You're in Singapore. You're yeah. in Singapore and it follows you. Yes, that's, that's, and uh, I don't know why that sketch became so famous. It's mysterious, you know, how some things catch on. Yes, it is mysterious. I think it has something to do with your voice and the way you said cowbell. I really believe if anyone else had done that role, it would not, that sketch would not have endured the way it does. I give you credit for that. It's a fine uh sketch, but I think it's the way you said cowbell. Well, it was also, it was Will Ferrell and, you know, what is it, uh, Meet the Reaper or something about the Reaper? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, don't Fear the Reaper. Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah, yeah. Will, you know. 
Yes, I'm sure all those were all great elements, but I think you pulled it all together. Well, thanks, but it's it's uh, kind of run its course. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's going to keep going. <laughs> No matter what else you achieve in your career, it will keep going and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I know <laughs> that I'm very appreciative that you could do this interview because we are on opposite ends of the United States. And I also don't take it for granted because I know that you are not a tech savvy person. You are not comfortable with technology. Is that true? Absolutely. Uh, somebody had to set this all up for me. I, I don't have a cell phone. I you don't, don't have, have a cell phone? A, no, I don't have a computer. I've never sent a text or an email or. How do you make a phone call? Let's say you're on a movie set and you want to make a phone call to say to me, to your old friend Conan O'Brien, how would you do it? Well, here at home, I have a landmine, a landline. I hope you don't have a landmine. Let's hope no, that, that I'm it's that's a landline that was here when I, when I, when I moved in, uh -huh. uh, same number. And uh, when I, on a set, Sometimes they give me a cell phone, but it's not for me. It's so they can reach me. That's amazing. I'm, I think so many of us have become so dependent on ours. I, I'm fascinated by the idea that you don't have uh, access even to a computer. Do you ever, have you ever Googled yourself on a computer? I have not. Uh, my wife has, has uh, a computer and she knows about these things. And, uh, you know, that pretty much takes care of it for me. It's your wife Funny. will tell you, you know, what they're saying about you on the internet if you needed to even know that. She says, don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, have you ever looked at uh, Google Earth? That's something that I'm not very tech savvy, but I love Google Earth. Sometimes I like to go on and just look at my where I live, just to yeah. see, have you ever done that? Yes, you know, in the old days on movie sets, actors would sit around uh, between uh, setups and takes and they would play cards or they'd read a book. And now of course they all have their cell phones. And I said to a friend of mine, could you Google my house? And it was really amazing. I could see, you know, lawn chairs and the car in the driveway. It's really fantastic, you know. I hope it was your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Watch out for those uh, strange cars. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's, I'm, I'm glad that you have some familiarity with it. If you're not getting, if you're not on the internet, do you get mail then? Let's say fans want to write you letters. They want to write to the great Christopher Walk and they want to write, do you get fan mail like through the U.S. postal system? Yes. yes. What kind of stuff do you, do you read those letters? Do you read any of them? I do, and uh, it's it's uh, that that's a tricky thing because you have to be careful about acknowledging. Sometimes I get uh, strange uh, things, not too strange, but just odd. And uh, of course, you know, if you answer somebody, you confirm that they know where you are. So yeah, you got to be careful about that. You be careful. Do you um, get requests? I sometimes get requests in the mail that are strange, strange sure. requests. Yeah, well, you know, just the ordinary, come to my wedding, you know, I'm in Arizona, you know, uh, do this, do that, but. Uh, do you ever get requests for money? Sure, absolutely. Because I sent you one. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you for $800, I never heard back. Well, you did get it because otherwise I, it was money misspent. <laughs> uh, I, sent it, I sent it to you immediately. <laughs> okay, well then I just must have misplaced it. I occasionally th think of, you know, I should write Christopher Walken and see if I could get some money and just to see what happens. And I, uh, I put the cash in the envelope, so maybe somebody <laughs> took it. Let's talk about Wild Mountain Time. Uh, it's a beautiful movie, it's gorgeous and um, shot in such a beautiful location. And in this film, uh, you were required to have an Irish accent, which is, can, can be tricky. It is, and, and I studied, you know, before I went there, I had recordings and uh, things to help me. But when I got there, everybody was Irish. 
So that was intimidating. And I had to get used to that. And, uh, but it, I hadn't been to Ireland for some reason. There are places I've, I've never been. And, you had and never been to Ireland? No. And it was really uh, beautiful. It was in a place uh, um, some hours outside of Dublin in the country. And uh, there really were rainbows and it was green and it was moody. And uh, uh, it was just beautiful. The place we stayed in uh, had a, a rookery where they raised hawks and falcons and owls. And uh, it was uh, the... It was a magical experience. Yeah, it's the a actor, you know, wonderful actors. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the cast is you have a you have a fantastic cast. John Patrick Shanley, Emily Blunt, Jamie Dornan, John Hamm, Gerbola Malloy. Yeah, just and and I don't know if you noticed it, the the Irish accent, I mean, obviously there are so many different kinds of Irish accent, but it's very musical to me. That's when I come from 100% Irish. Um, and when I've gone back to Ireland, I've always been transfixed by the musicality of the way they talk. It almost sounds like they're singing when they talk, you know? Yes. Well, that whole part of the world, there is that, that uh, thing with language, uh, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, you know. Sure. It, um, but I hadn't been to Ireland and I, I want to go back. Yeah, well, soon I'm hoping we'll all be able to travel. You know, that'd be nice. You know, you've been you've been inside now for as long as probably the rest of us just stuck inside. The last time I was to New York uh, City was, uh, you know, eight, nine months ago. Yeah. March. Yeah. Um, well, we have a clip here and, and this is a, a clip and you can tell just even in this clip. Uh, and this is a scene with you and, and, and Emily Blunt, just how gorgeous the location is. I mean, lots of. It, it seems like a lot of animals, farm country. Was this anything that you grew up with at all in your experience? No, I was born in New York City and uh, this is really different. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't encounter a lot of sort of draft horses in New York City. Cows. Cows, cows. And the, cows wearing cow bells. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and cows, cows are misunderstood. They're actually quite aggressive. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe just with you. Maybe, maybe, but they'd get a look in their eye and then go for you, you know. <laughs> That's just you. That's nobody else. Nobody else has ever said that about a cow. That's them realizing who you are and wanting to, you know, wanting to get in on that, you know? That's all. That's all that is. Just It's turf. <laughs> You're not having turf wars with cows. Sure you are. <laughs> well, here's a clip we're going to show now uh, from uh, Wild Mountain Time, where you're talking to your daughter, who's played by Emily Blunt. Let's take a look. Are you in love with Anthony? It's more than love. Don't be. Now go while your damn gates are open. No, I'm not. I'm not done with you. He's not normal. I don't care. He'll never marry. Well, then neither will I, and he will be in his house, and I'll be in mine. Rosemary! Be quick, I need to pee. And you'd sell to a yank, would you? He's a Riley. He's a yank. You're trespassing now. Drop this plot, or I'll kill you. Would you have the place go on auction? Anthony will never marry. Oh, he will. Wake up. Look to yourself. No, and if it comes to that, I'll freeze my eggs. You'll what? I'll freeze my eggs. If he's slow, I'll wait. You should freeze your whole body if you're waiting for that one. I believe he will come to me. I need to settle. Wild Mountain Time is available in theaters and on demand. You must have shot this just before COVID. Yes, uh, in October of, of last year. Wow. Doesn't that seem like a million years ago? It certainly does. Well, this has been, uh, as always, an honor and a privilege to talk to you, really. You're, uh, you're, you're one of my favorite actors of all time and uh, just a joy to get to talk to you. And I'm glad you're doing well and you're staying safe. Thank you, Conan. It's a pleasure. And I'm glad to see you so well. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of makeup on. So you, you actually have no idea 
How well, sick. this is a great. This is a great day. They're starting with the vaccines. Isn't that great? So, yeah, the vaccines are beginning. It's a wonderful great day. It's the beginning of, of something. It's the beginning of the end. I think. Let's hope. I hope. So. Well, the beginning of the end of the badness, not the beginning of the end of the. Forget it. Either way, it's a good thing. I should have let you say it and not me. Christopher Walken, thank you very much. Thank you, really. It's been an honor. Thank you, Colonel.